Hi, Julie Powell here. I'm going to do a little video on how to make some beautiful painterly pet portraits. And these are quick and easy and loads of fun and I do them for friends and family and of course my own animals. So this is one that is already finished of 18 month old Dexter. I'm sure you might remember Dexter from a couple of other posts that he's been in. Um, and I took this beautiful image of him and I wanted to turn it into a beautiful portrait um, that we could have printed on canvas and hang on the wall. And the background's not brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through step by step and show you how I made this portrait using Topaz Impressions 2, which is a great fun program to use. So this is pretty much the finished product. So I'm just going to go back here. Um, as I said, the background wasn't great, but it's a beautiful image of him. He's concentrating so hard on something. So what I did was I did... Um, mask out the background. Now I can quickly go through and do another copy of that to show you what I did. So right click and duplicate layer and then turning that background layer off. You can hear my decks in the background. Um, I'm going to use the quick selection tool and I'm just going to roughly come in here and select him. I don't need to be too perfect at this stage, you just need to be fairly close. So I'm then going to mask that. Now there's loads of different ways to do this, but I just find a quick easy way to do it. I'm now going to select my brush and I'm just going to just a nice soft brush so if you come up here and just make it nice and soft not too big not too small and I'm just going to go along and just paint in the edges again just briefly because you can see where it is selected at the moment it's a bit harsh and I've missed like all the fur around his muzzle and his nose and a few whiskers and around his eye Okay, so now that I've done that, I can then come in and select mask and I'm just going to brush back in some of this and it's keeping the fur but getting rid of the background and just softening the edge off. Okay, just click OK. I can then, if I need to, I can come back in, oops, with a black brush and just tidy up any bits that I missed. It doesn't have to be too perfect, um, but we just want to get all those sort of little soft edges and a few of the hair around his muzzle. So this is one that I took a little bit more time and extracted before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in a background that I could use. Now this is um, one of my texture packs. This is one called Moody Serenity. And I'm just going to put it on the page in behind that extracted layer. And then I want to separate him a little bit from that page. So I'm going to put in a layer and I'm going to put a black brush, a nice soft one, make it a bit big and I'm just going to paint in around him where the shadows might be and switch that to multiply. And drop that out a little bit. Now this is where you can see where you might have missed a few bits and pieces. Oops. And you can come along and you can clean those up if you need to. All 
Okay, I'm then going to come back to this layer. So I've dropped that down to sort of 35%. I'm going to put in another layer and I'm going to switch to white. And I'm going to put in a bit of a, a highlight around his face, around his chin. And I'm going to change that to screen. And I'm going to drop that right back as well. So now what I'm going to do, and I think that's probably a bit too much on there, so I'm just going to get my eraser tool and I'm just going to soften that off a little bit because I think it was just a bit too much. Okay, going to the top of the layer, I'm now going to merge all that onto a new layer. Um, you could select it all, merge. I use Control, Alt, Shift and E. Um, or command option shift and E if you're on a Mac and I've got that onto its own little layer um, I can turn everything else off it doesn't make any difference so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to filter go to topaz I'm going to go to impressions and it is going to load up into impressions and then we can have a little play with the image. Okay, so here's my original image um, and this is loaded into Topaz Labs Impressions 2. Now, if you've never used it before, this is such a fun program. It's brilliant for making a really painterly effect to just about anything. You've got lots of different, um, you can mark your favourites. There's, um, they have featured ones all the time, um, charcoal and pastel. You can do paintings, impressionists. Um, you can use pencil. Um, there's all sorts of different ones. Um, I love the painting ones. Now you can do, um, I mean they've got a chiascaro effect that you can add to it which I love. Um, you can see all my favourites, Degas, um, Edward Hopper, um, there's some Scumble ones, um, there is, which is very cute, um, it makes him look like a bit of a scruffy dog. So I'm just going to click that and it'll just take a minute to go through. So that's made him look like quite a scruff dog, which is quite cute. Um, one of the ones that I absolutely love is this oil painting by Jim Lasala. Um, so I'm going to click that. Um, the oil glaze by Blake Rudis is beautiful as well. There is so many. Um, if you go into Impressionists, you've got um, Cezanne and um, Van Gogh and stuff like that as well. So it sort of emulates their type of brush strokes, which is just beautiful. I mean, have a look at the details in this. It is just gorgeous. Now, if you click on this little thing in here, we can then come through and we can play with different settings. So we can change the brush, brush size, um, the brush volume, um, the paint opacity. Um, we can do all sorts of things. We can also change um, the smudge effect where we want um, the color coverage which in this particular image obviously in the center we can change the lighting um, so we can increase the brightness if I wish to um, the light position um, is actually pretty good because the light was coming in from this way it's probably want to bring it over here more but I could if I wanted to change it so that the light was hitting more on his face so even though the light was really coming in this way I can change the position so it brings more light into this side of his face um, I can put a vignette on it and I can also add a texture so I could put um, different textures and you can pick what you want this is an asphalt texture I could try brick or um, a canvas. Just give that a second to load up. Um, so it gives you slightly different um, textures that you can use. That gives you sort of like a real sort of text 
canvas grain into it. I really like the ash belt so I'm putting it back to that one. And then of course you can have it whether you want how much of the image um, opacity and so forth. So um, this black that we put through just puts a bit of that shadow in behind him and separates it from the background. So I'm quite happy with those little changes so I'm just going to click OK um, and it will pop back into Photoshop when it's done. So this is um, the final image brought back in. Um, I put a layer mask on it and I actually removed a little bit of it around his eye here. Um, without the layer mask it was a bit painterly but I still wanted to be able to see his beautiful eye. This is a personal preference but I wanted the eye there. So I also then did a curves layer and lightened or gave a highlight to his eye. I then did another curves layer which I set on multiply which darkened the image a little bit. I also added a gradient mask a gradient map I should say which was um, in the presets here this is copper. I then also did a vignette around the piece um, and that's pretty much my final image of Dexter so I hope you really enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.